Welcome everybody. This is the Microsoft 365 Platform Community Call. It is April 12, 2022. Uh, my name is Jose Yuvonen. I'm a product, product manager. Now I'm learning this, not program manager, product manager in the Microsoft 365 Platform side of the house. Uh, title was changed, doesn't actually change anything, but we do, but apparently product manager is more descriptive than program manager. Anyway, so we'll start with the latest updates and news for Microsoft 365 platform. Then we go to the crew picture mode and together mode for those who are enabling their video. And as you're enabling the video, please note that that means that we will take a GIF animation out of the together mode picture and we'll release that part of the block post summary. So uh, as you're enabling the video, you're giving us the permission to do so. And in general, all of the calls are getting recorded uh, as and you will see the warning in the Microsoft Teams what that means. We'll have the real stars of the day uh, starting uh, after that, roughly 10 past, 15 past, depending on how fast I will speak in English this time. Uh, we'll start with a building in a meeting document signing app for Microsoft Teams with Shai Baya, Reddy, and Ion O'Brien. And then uh, they will have a 20 minutes time for doing that demo. And then we'll move to Waldek Mastercards and Anup Tati. Uh, Anup is from Content and Cloud, uh, building and well being solution with Microsoft Teams and Viva Connection. So a lot of Teams extensibility and Microsoft 365 extensibility in general in this call this time. Now, a uh, quick recap on the, all of the assets. So we do have two different YouTube channels. We have the official Microsoft 365 YouTube channel where we have polished uh, videos provided by the Cloud Advocates and Microsoft. And then we have our Microsoft 365 community video channel where we have all of the community call recordings, demo recordings, a lot of other uh, uh, videos as well from the Microsoft and community. And uh, due to historical reasons, we kind of ended up in two different channels. Don't worry about it. You can subscribe to both of them. That's the easiest way to follow up on what's happening in YouTube. We do have a lot of open source assets available. Uh, are always the guidance is don't start from scratch of course learn from our learning material but then have a look on the examples because the examples will show you how to approach things and how to make things happen so there's a lot of lot of samples available within it in our github repos now as to github repos might be a bit difficult to always scan into and what's available where we have actually provided a sample galleries and since last week we actually even released our microsoft 365 unified sample gallery which is the link on the top of there and if you're wondering that hey too many links i can't remember all of these luckily there's only one link to remember which is akms m365 pmp which is our microsoft 365 platform community welcome page from where you can then find all of the different assets and YouTube links and channels and all of the things from one centralized location. Now, before we go to the further on this call, just wanted to remind everybody, we do have quite a lot of these community calls available. We have this weekly call happening every single Tuesday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, which is the Microsoft 365 platform call. And we try to be quite, let's say, cross the Microsoft 365 in this call. So anything in the Microsoft 365 demonstrated and uh, shown by the Microsoft people. Then we have multiple other community calls available. So Adaptive Card, Microsoft Identity Platform, Office Add-ins and Power Apps, which are happening in a monthly basis. And then we have a community co co driven calls. So Microsoft 365 community and VR connection and SPFX, which is happening on two Thursdays at 7 a.m. Pacific time bi-weekly. So every single Thursday, there's a call on there. If you're wondering how to get invited on this course, again, go to AKMS M365 BNB. You can download recurrent invite, which is the easiest way to get that invite in your calendar. We also provide you a Easy, easy way and easy access to get a free Microsoft 365 developer tenant. And this is by far the easiest way to get started on doing anything in Microsoft 365. It will automatically renew after 90 days as long as you use it for developer purposes. And that means that you're doing debugging, deploying solutions and testing things there. It will basically detect that, oh, you are actually using this for developer purposes. So therefore, I will renew this tenant for you. So you're not using it for any other purposes. So please take advantage of this option. We also provide you a lot of, lot of training material uh, for free. I think we are up to more than 70 or 75 training modules already in the Microsoft Learn related on Microsoft 365 platform capabilities. So these are great ways of understanding the art of possible within a matter of one hour or two hours. And of course, sure, there's a lot of, lot of more longer and bigger training materials and packages available in the internet with, with uh, cost. Uh, but these are great ways of getting started on, on the baseline understanding 
across the different capabilities what's available in the Microsoft 365. Now, I already mentioned this one, which is a really, really cool thing. And so last week, we finally announced uh, the new Microsoft 365 Unified Sample Gallery. We've been promoting this for a while already, but there has been some hiccups and things which we, we kind of considered that to be a soft launch rather than officially available. Now it's officially out and all of the samples provided by Microsoft or by community in our different GitHub repos are automatically getting surfaced in here. So you have a one location where you're going to find all of the samples for Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, Viva Connection, uh, SharePoint Framework and so on. So you can easily filter uh, all of the samples which are available. Now, if you're wondering that, okay, I, I have this sample here in a GitHub and I would like to contribute on it, or how would I use the sample? We actually got you covered and I will let David to explain what that means. So yeah, as mentioned, all those samples that were provided are from amazing individuals like you in the community. Over a thousand, in fact, and that is fantastic. But you may have something cool that you want to contribute. You're not quite sure how to do it. Can it be in that sample gallery that is adopt at adoption.microsoft.com? Absolutely. There are hurdles that may prevent you from doing that, such as how do I submit a pull request? I've never worked with GitHub before. Sharing is Caring is a program that's going to provide you hands-on guidance on how you can accomplish just that. A variety of topics from maybe your first ever PR to maybe you'd like to present on a community call to setting up your SPFX workstation, submitting a Power Platform sample. As Vesa mentioned, we got you covered. These are live, safe space opportunities for you to learn together and ask questions and we will absolutely not record it so you are safe to ask anything you'd like all free scheduled throughout the month aka.ms forward slash sharing is caring and we just scheduled another power platform samples and a community doc session and look for more of those dates to open up over the next couple of months and we appreciate everyone's patience as we got those dates figured out again please don't hesitate to join we would love to work together with you and see your amazing work in our sample galleries because we're one big community family that's it, back to you. Excellent, thank you, David, on that one. Now, moving on, on, on recapping all of the different assets which we have available, we do have two different podcasts or vlogs, or one of them, and two of them, there's two podcasts and one video blog. So first one being the Microsoft 365 Developer Podcast, and this one, the latest version and the latest episode of this one was released today, where Paul and uh, Jeremy Fake from Microsoft, and Paul uh, Shuffleane from Adding 365, had an interesting chat with Andrew Connells from Voitanos related on his development training materials and his perspective on the Microsoft 365 development. That's quite nice 45 to 15 minutes uh, chat between the between the guys. Now the second uh, podcast or V block show what we have is the Microsoft 365 PMP weekly where we always cover the latest news from the Microsoft and from the community and articles and videos and so on. And then we typically have a visitor, either MVP or Microsoft employee in the show to talk about their career and their focus areas within the community. Uh, latest episode on this one went live today and that actually was with David Warner, who just was in the, <laughs> was just explaining the previous slide. We talked about David's career move from being an MVP and then joining now Microsoft pretty recently. Thank you. Congratulations, David, one more time on that. And then the focus on the community open source, community acknowledgement, our patching systems and all of that stuff. So why the community actually matters. It's a in really interesting uh, discussion as well. Now, the latest news from Microsoft uh, uh, site. Uh, this week, we had three news from the Microsoft 365 developer blog site. First of all, we had the news from David Russell uh, from Zero to Hero, uh, connecting your web app to Microsoft Teams using Azure Communication Services. And Azure Communication Services is a great way of integrating or in adding pieces and functionalities which we are familiar with in the Microsoft Teams to a website or externally facing applications. So it's rather than integrating the application to Teams, no, no, let's actually get bits and pieces of the Teams and expose them in the website. And, and that is a great blog post uh, with three different videos where they, David goes through the different assets available on that. We also have the announcement for the Microsoft 365 Unified Sample Gallery, and there is more than 1,000 samples available, which is really, 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 really cool. Uh, so there's a lot of samples across the different areas. And then the last one uh, from last week was to learn from the Community Teams app Dev Challenge Winner brings high quality training into Microsoft Teams. And this is an interesting discussion in video discussion between Bob German and a partner, My Series Game, which is actually providing an 8 mil application, which is around learning 
tooling and learning exercises and how that's getting embedded directly into Microsoft Teams. So really, really interesting discussion on that. Now on the Teams platform side of the house, the documentation news, I think watch it. Thanks, Asa. Hello, everyone. I would walk you through the platform and the documentation updates. Let's start with the platform feature updates on the left side. So people picker control in adaptive card is now in GA. People picker control is an input control in Teams that allows users to search and select people. This allows end user to search and select people in chat, channel, or across the organization between Teams. The people picker control is available across all the Teams clients, such as web, desktop, and mobile. You can use Microsoft Teams Client SDK, which provides the Select People API to integrate the people picker input control in your web app. The second one is Share to Teams from Personal App or a Tab. Share to Teams allows users to share the content from Personal App or a Tab to other users or group or channel within Teams. Users can select Share to Teams to launch the native experience in a pop-up window. The pop-up window allows users to add other users or groups or channels to share their content. Please note, this is still in a developer preview. Now let's move to the documentation part on the right side. We have been working on multiple step-by-step -step guides. Step-by-step -step guide is the artifact that has a task-oriented approach, linear topic, and provides an end-to-end -end scenario. So we'll be talking about the Create Teams Conversation Bot Step-by-Step -step Guide. Teams Conversation Bot allows users to interact with your web app service through text, interactive cards, and task models. Basic conversations are handled through the bot framework connector, a single REST API. This API enables your bot to communicate with Teams and other channels. This step-by-step -step guide helps you create a basic conversation bot in the Teams application. So these were the platform updates. If you have any feedback or suggestion, please post it on ak.ms slash Teams platform feedback. The link is available in the footer. You could also follow us on Twitter and configure the RSS feed to get the regular updates on the platform. Thank you. Back to Wesley. Thank you, Wachid, on this one. So really, really cool. One thing that I want to call out is the step-by-step -step guidance in the Microsoft Teams platform docs. These are really, really cool focused guidance. So a lot of the organizations should be learning how Wachid and the team is actually doing their guidance in the docs.microsoft.com. But please give us feedback, um, how we can improve, what works, what doesn't work. Um, and the team is always interested in improving these things. Now, quick recap also, we will have two different events happening relatively soon. So we'll have a 5th of May, we'll have a Microsoft Tech Days. This is UK based, and so we're in a European time zone a bit. Uh, it is actually suitable for early US participation as well. But on 5th of May, uh, we'll have a special two hour event where we actually go through an building together a relatively complex, complex Microsoft Teams a solution touching Microsoft Teams and bots and Power BI's and Viva connections and, and so on. So there's an interesting design and implementation step-by-step -step guidance as we go through this implementation. That's two hour allocation in 5th of May. And then later on the May, we'll have the Microsoft Builds coming. So May 24 to 26 uh, is happening Microsoft Build. The agenda is not yet public. Registration is coming soon at mybuild.microsoft.com. But this is the best location to come and join to uh, to know the latest around the Microsoft 365 Power Platform, Windows, and all of the, the cool things what the developers can do within the Microsoft Cloud. Now, before we go to the real stars of today, let's do a group photo uh, in together mode uh, so we don't actually miss that one. And let me actually set up things. I will set up together mode, and we have 50 seats. Um, in really soon when I get the teams visible. Let me set up the to get them out there and we'll move it in here. So 50 seats in the room who are the fastest. I will not enable my video for now. I can say SharePoint Monkey there as well. Thank you, Rodrigo, <laughs> always present. <laughs> we are closing in the limit of 50 and I will start recording. Not yet, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I will start recording in a second and let's do some hand waving everybody. Thank you for joining once again. Let's see if we can get a great GIF animation there. Uh, Brian is, is imitating Sip on the middle. That's how you do that. Thank you everybody.
awesome to see again all of the faces in the community. Excellent. Thank you for that. And we'll grab a GIF animation out of that. Thank you. Now, then it's time for the real stars of the day. Um, and we're we are actually quite well on the schedule if we can keep things in 20 minutes and 20 minutes. So Shai Baya, Reddy and Eon Brian will start with the Microsoft Teams application uh, for document signing. Hey, that was a great start. Thank you. Uh, thank you for organizing the call. And hey, everybody, hope you are having a great time of the day. And here I am with my colleague Abin and I'm Bhavya to share a recent work. Uh, it's a proof of concept called document signing. So without a delay, let's get started. For the next 20 minutes, we will talk about what is a stage and what, what are the different ways of sharing to a stage and uh, followed by a quick demo and a brief code walkthrough. Then we'll open the stage for, uh, for the floor for questions. Just to get the context right, in the past one minute or in the couple of slides, I have been talking about stage, sharing to stage. To, get the, to set the context, uh, this is about in-meeting Teams apps. So if you have an application that uh, uh, you have built for meeting uh, meeting purposes, then the whole presentation for the next 20 minutes makes more sense to you. So whenever we join a meeting, it's always you want to share something uh, with audiences uh, visually, right? Which is easier way of communicating. So the first option we do is just click on the share button and share your screen. Great. But that's one way. Uh, it's a one way interaction. What if you want your users to be more interactive and you built an app? How do you get this? more appealing experience. So for an example, as you see on this slide, there is a Contoso app and I'm about to do a sprint grooming, let's say. And the app on the right side, uh, it's called a side panel. The center part is called a stage. So this is the stage we are talking about for the next 20 minutes. And uh, when I load the app to this meeting and click on this little arrow that uh, that's highlighted, the app gets shared. It means all the attendees of the meeting will be able to see the same thing at the same time, also be able to interact with the app, which is cool. So it serves the purpose of sharing the whole app uh, in one go from a side panel to the center stage. And to achieve this, there is a little setting for the manifest which we highlighted here. And for more details or more documentation, the links are in the footnotes. So this scenario is called sharing the whole application to the stage. OK, that's great. So in the previous application, all my teammates can see the whole uh, side panel being presented to the stage that worked. But what if I have a different scenario? Sharing a lot of information if the app is actually heavily loaded can be more clumsy, right? Especially on the stage. So uh, is there a way that I can pick and choose the panel documents or if I can choose a specific board to share? So in this example that we have picked, there is a sales team that's trying to present the data. And I have a bar chart which we really wanted to focus on. And uh, if you take a closer look at each of these panels, there is a button called share in the meeting. So I click on the first bar chart for sharing the meeting. So that chart gets presented directly to the stage. It means I can pick and choose what part of the app or which amount of information I want to share uh, from this side panel to the stage. So uh, this is called programmatic sharing to stage, which is a new feature from the platform. And our POC is built on top of uh, showcasing this programmatic sharing to stage uh, by using a document signing scenario. And uh, here are the technical requirements that will let you use this. And again, in the footnotes, there is a detailed link for, the mo for more documentation. So right now we know what is a stage and we are talking about in-meeting apps, but at a, let's take a step back and then see a bigger picture. So I briefly touched upon uh, for programmatic sharing to stage, a use case for a sales team where everybody was able to see a, a specific part of the app and interact with it. Can there be more use cases? Of course there are. At a very high level, we brainstormed a few, and one of those we'll be demonstrating in a bit is about document signing. Let's say you are uh, running a mortgage application or you want to do a lease, lease signing document, wherein you and the other party have to review at the same time and then sign off a, uh, sign off a document. Also, another example could be like a GitHub pull request. So it can be interactive and without delays, the work can be done in the same meeting time and uh, using this programmatic share to stage. Another interesting idea that we were uh, brainstorming is about small and medium businesses. If you are a small business and you want to give a virtual personalized experience to the user, wherein 
you have to help somebody to pick a uh, pick an outfit and choose various options that are available from your store then you can create a meeting add your app and use programmatic sharing to state so that you can share the cart so you as the seller and i as the buyer can together work on the cart and close this deal so these are a few use cases and this could be uh, this could go on all right so before we dive into the demo i would like to walk you through uh, two different prerequisites or two different scenarios that we experimented using proof of concept also a heads up Vajit has pointed out about people picker we do use it here we experimented that uh, part of people picker as well uh, as part of our poc so our poc is called meeting signing and there are especially two different kinds of experiences for our poc first one is a pre-meeting experience or we call it as creating a document so the idea is to have a document review together and sign off the document so first of all, we need a document uh, to get started, right? And for this POC purposes, we mocked up a document. We mocked up a few uh, ahead of time. These are not uh, the documents from SharePoint or not uploading from uh, any other sources. We uh, did a HTML mockup and the app runs on React in the front end and we do have a C-sharp backend. So first, let's talk about creating the document part. I am a Teams user and I created a meeting because I wanted to go over a certain um, document and then sign off with all the attendees or whoever I wanted to sign off. I added them as the attendees to the meeting. And then I install this app to this meeting. So once the installation is done, I have an option to add this app to a tab. So as soon as I add this app to a tab, so there will be a little pop up, which uh, there will be a little tab where I can go ahead and create the document. Once that's done, um, all the calls from here are handled by the backend service. And once I choose what kind of document I wanted to load, um, again mentioning it's a mockup, so the document gets created. So one part of the problem is solved. I now have a document. And the second part is about sharing this in a meeting. So here comes uh, the time of the meeting, and we all join the meeting, and then I start the meeting, and I open the side panel, the right part, right hand part of the uh, uh, previous slides, if you remember on the panel, because I created a document, I own one, right? So I would see all the documents that I created as uh, as an individual card, each of them. And if somebody doesn't own any documents, they will see a different message. Again, we'll see this in the demo. I'm just giving you a heads up. So from the given set of documents, I will choose which I would like to share and and click on that share to meeting button. Then everybody will be able to see the document. And I would like to take a step back here. Whenever I created a document, I have uh, I said we are using people picker, right? We use the people picker to assign signers and viewers of a document. So if you are a signer, you can view and sign the document. If you are a viewer, you only get a read only access for the document. If you are neither of these, you will not uh, see uh, the document at all when I share. So we covered all this uh, as part of our demo recording, but here is how it works. And once you share the document to the meeting, everybody can review in real time and then sign off. As you sign off, it gets reflected in others' views if they have the access to view the document. That's how this whole meeting signing POC works. And I would like to hand this off to my colleague, Avin, to take you through the demo and a code walkthrough. Thank you. Thanks very much, Bavia. And thank you all very much for joining the community call. So yes, as Bavia was talking about we were creating a proof concept to showcase this new programmatic share to stage API. So it's a creative application. I have a kind of confidence, but let's summarize it again. Um, that allows you to share a document in a meeting, have members of the meeting sign the document at the same time. And it's a React application that calls a .NET API. So some of the features that we're using in this uh, proof concept includes, as you might expect, the new programmatic sharing to stage API. And we're using Teams single sign-on and with Azure Active Directory. We have adaptive cards for specific flows. And then we're using the authorized user to determine, to create user-specific stage views so that the, what users see changes the pace depending on their authentication status. And one thing to note as we go through this, and that this has been done using mock documents, and I have said, said this already, but just to be purely clear, we're not using SharePoint, we're not using similar service. Great. So to create a document flow, we have to run over this, but so we 
before the meeting, we have a task module that's popped up that allows you to create a simple mock document. It uses an adaptive card to create this flow. Um, if you haven't used an adaptive card before, they're an extremely easy way to create a simple piece of UI um, with, that is styled to the client that it's operating on. Um, but one of the things that Rajiv talked about that I want to make sure we call out is that we're also using the people picker here, which allows you to easily select single or multiple users in a card. Um, it allows for pre-population, so if you have specific users you want to have selected in a list, that's possible. But best for this scenario is that it allows you to pick your people from either the entire organization or from the current context. So in the in a meeting, the current context is the participants participants of the meeting. So you, you there is an extremely easy way to take to select users from a current context for essentially zero cost using the people picker in adaptive cards if you make use of it. All right, let's get on to some parts of demos. Unfortunately, demoing a meeting app from inside a meeting is difficult. Um, there are like multiple scenarios and uh, views to this app. So we've recorded, pre-recorded all this. Um, but if you want to try it out, there is a, a manifest file available on a GitHub repository that you can download today and run. Um, so on the videos, you'll see on the slide side, you'll see there are two videos. The left hand side is the meeting participant. This is Bavia's view. And on the right hand side is the meeting organizer. This is my view. It might be a bit hectic, but hopefully I have enough pauses in, in, in included to, to keep, keep things covered. Great. So this is the signing a document flow where everybody in the meeting can both view and sign the document. Um, on the right, you can see that the document creator has a list of documents that they've created previously. Um, this is listed in the side panel. And if you look at Bavia's side panel, she has no documents created, so she doesn't see this option. The document creator can scroll the list, find a document that they want to share, and then click on the share to meeting button. This share to meeting button is what actually calls the new programmatic share to stage API uh, and essentially tells teams to load a specific URL to the stage. Now, as you as, as we share the stage, you see the document is shared almost immediately to both participants, to the participants, and they both see a similar UI. However, small things like the text box of if you are allowed to sign or not vary depending on who who is viewing the document. So on the right hand side, own has a blue text box and on the left hand side, Bavio has a blue text box, but they're in different positions because not everyone can sign in the same place. Now, Bavio is about to sign the document, so she's going to click on her text box. It's going to pop up and this pops up with a little adaptive card. Again, we're using adaptive cards to create small um, UI elements that confirms that Bavio is who she, say, she, say, she says she is. In a real world implementation, this might be something like a text box or some other form of input that allows for you to sign with your finger. And if you continue on, you'll notice that as Bavia has signed it, almost immediately I will see her signature show up on my side of the um, my view of the meeting. And so you can even create some sort of a two-way or multi-way communication. Um, I can now sign a document. I pop up my adaptive card. I sign it and the document is now signed. Hopefully that makes some sort of sense. But as I said, this is only one scenario and there are multiple scenarios that might happen that can lead to different uh, outcomes for the viewers. One is viewing a document. So this is a scenario where a meeting participant is allowed to view the, signature, the signing happening, but is not allowed to sign themselves. So you'll see here that on Bavia's left hand side, um, she has no text boxes. Um, she can see that there's a text box for me, but there is no, no place for her to sign or to click. And she has a fairly basic, essentially, a document to show. But as I go about signing the document, it takes me a second to decide if I actually want to sign or not, you'll see that my signature shows up on her left hand side almost immediately. But perhaps most interesting is what happens if you want somebody in the meeting who shouldn't see the document signing. Maybe you're in a large meeting like this and you only want key people to sign a document and then move on with uh, the rest of the scenario, uh, the rest of the meeting. So in this scenario, we've set it up so that only I, uh, the document creator, has the ability to sign and view the document, but the non-viewing meeting participants um, 
will not be able to see the document from happening. So while I am able to sign the document, the document shows for me, Bavia will see an error message that says she is not authorized to view this document. And um, this is all handled by making a call to the backend. So when the stage loads with a document ID, with a specific document, it makes a call to the API from the React app, and the API will verify that the user is who they say they are, and they have the, they are entitled to view the document. Um, I will go through this more in a second when we run through the code. And so at the very top, Bavia talked about sharing an entire application to stage. So that is one of the two ways you can now share to stage. And that is still possible in our in our demo. If somebody clicks on the share to share application to stage button in the side panel that is highlighted, um, you will see the following error message. Essentially saying that the share button is not supported in this app. That is because while you are able to share, we don't have scenario to cover this. But I just wanted to call out that it's possible to have uh, application sharing as well as programmatic sharing. All right. So I'm going to do some quick code through um, and I'll run through our code. Our code is currently available. This proof concept is currently available on the Microsoft Teams sample repository in Office Dev. And let me open up the code. You can see it, it's available today and you can run it today if you like. Hopefully the documentation covers everything. And maybe zoom in a bit just so you can see this. Great. So our code is split into three sections and um, we have the web um, code which includes all our controllers our authorization code and our front-end code uh, our domain includes a bunch of services and our infrastructure includes um, data storage and calls to external services like microsoft craft but the most interesting thing i suppose to talk about is the new api how how simple it is how it works so in our side panel document card we make a call to the share that app content to stage um, function from the Teams SDK when you click on this button. It's quite simple where it takes in a callback to handle the success and failure states, and it also takes in a URL that tells us to navigate to. And so here we're saying navigate to the current host slash stage slash ID, where ID is the document ID that we are using. And this URL or this route is a route inside the React router, router that we're using. So if we go to our React router config, you can see that we have a stage slash document ID. So when this route matches, we will open the document stage component. And that document stage component, relatively simple, it will get the document ID from the parameters, and then we will make a call to our API, and it will render whatever is returned from that API, either a document or if an error is returned, it will render that error. That API is relatively straightforward. We take in the document ID, we get any information we need to from a document store. This includes information like the document name, the document title, and sig signatories of the document, viewers of the document, and things like that. But before we give that document back to the user, we do a check to ensure that whoever is requesting this document is entitled to this document. And that is handled in our get document handler, and which is an authorization handler for .NET. And we check to see that the user who's making the request is either the owner, one of the signers, or a viewer, an assigned viewer of this document. And if they're not, they will get the you are not authorized to view this document error that Bavia received previously. And you might ask, how are we doing this? How do we know who the user is? And this is all done using the Teams SDK, and uh, in particular, the get auto token call. So we authenticate um, users to our app, um, and we store that information and any and that auth token is then used on calls to the API. And this works great for most of our scenarios. However, there's one scenario where if you try and create a document, we need more information than what Teams get auth token SDK provides us. Um, and that is if we, because as part of the create document flow, people picker gives us a user's ID and we want to get more information like the user's name to ensure that uh, we can provide the right information back from the API call. And that requires additional scopes that is not provided from the team's art call. So we get the user information, and if this, if we don't have the right scopes, it will fail. And um, we respond with a get art consent required. And back in the front end, when this response gets back to the user, 
to the front end, it will initiate a, a single sign on flow um, for the on behalf of um, scenario. Uh, and once that scenario is complete, we will be able to make graph calls. One thing I wanted to call out, um, and even more so now that Rajid has uh, discussed it as well today, is the people picker itself. So as I mentioned, we are using adaptive cards to create certain 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 UIs. Um, and in our create document flow, we're using the adaptive card people picker to select viewers and sign us. And it's an extremely simple integration if you want to use it. So we have just got a simple choice set here. And for the data for that choice set, we're saying to, we're telling teams to get information from the graph.microsoft.com slash users data set. And we're also limiting that data set to the current context. Um, and this is this gives us the ability to choose users essentially zero cost. Oh, cool. And I think I'm just about at time, so I'll quickly wrap up. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Um, we've run through the sharing to stage feature and how it can be used. And we've also done a proof of concept, which covers the programmatic sharing to stage API, but also touches another things like team single sign on adaptive cards. As I said, the proof of concept is available today on the Microsoft Teams sample GitHub. Um, and thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please leave in the chat and we will try to get to them ASAP. Back to you, Professor. Excellent. Thank you. Really, really cool stuff and, and a great scenario and great, great explanation how this one will work. And, and like Ian and Shai was saying, you can download the zip like what Jade was putting in the chat that well. Uh, this code is then hosted from Microsoft and you can play around with that sample. You can kind of test it out within your developer tenant, which is free as well. So please check it out. Uh, great way of learning how to build Microsoft Teams meeting apps um, using this model. Thank you for that. Now, Let's then move into Anoops and Waldex uh, demo of today, uh, where we're going to talk about Viva Connection and Microsoft Teams as well. Excellent. I have the honor and pleasure to share with you a new sample that you will be able to share now with your colleagues and customers to show them basically the power of what applications can they build with uh, Viva Connections, Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Graph Toolkit, and Teams. So last Ignite, we thought with a group of folks you see on the screen about what scenario could we show? How could we illustrate what people could use Viva Connections for and Microsoft Grab, the power of Teams and everything that we have available, our toolings and SDKs to build an app that's relevant, but also makes a perfect use, excellent use of the abilities that we have available at Microsoft 365. So with that, we thought, you know what? let's build something that will show the power of Viva connections across devices, so both desktop and mobile. They will then also tap into the insights that we have available in Microsoft Graph and also use some of the UI features that we have exposed to us through Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Now, as that happens in demos, oftentimes, you know, that we want to show things, we want to, to illustrate things, but oftentimes we cut a corner because reasons, because time, because because we're not going to show everything anyway, right? So we want to have something that works and that kind of illustrate the message, but that not might not be in the best shape for us to be able to share that and for you to be able to show it to everyone else too. And it's a shame really, because we thought that that's a great scenario. And if there's one thing that we hear from all of you time and again, is that you want us and you need more samples to basically, whenever you talk to customers and colleagues, that you can inspire them too, right? That you can also show them what's possible on Microsoft 365, what apps you can build, how you can extend it to your specific needs to make it your own. So with that, we kind of regroup and we say, you know what, we need to, um, update this sample, polish it, make it so, so that there is guidance, there is docs, there are step-by-steps uh, guidance to for you to be able to run it on your own tenant, your own environment, for you to be able to pull the code, adapt it to your needs and use it in your own engagement, show it to customers, basically to be able to kind of mimic some of that experience that you've seen us do at Ignite last year, but then do it within your own environment, within your own engagements. So with that, over the past few weeks, we worked together with Anoop, who is one of our MVPs and partners, to actually 
finish what we would start and bring it really to the state where it's something that we can be proud of and that it's something that will also work for you. So with that, I'll give it on to Anoop, who will walk you through the whole app, how it's built, how it works, will show it in action, and I also hope he will also show some code. Anoop? Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Waldek, for that. Right. Uh, so this part of the presentation I have divided into three parts. Um, in the first part, uh, we will see the uh, the solution in action. Uh, so we will uh, log into the uh, to the Viva Connections dashboard as two users, requester and a manager, and see uh, how how the solution works. And then in the second part, uh, we'll have a look at the core. Uh, the important bits, uh, and then uh, in the final part, uh, which is a small part, we'll just have a uh, recap and uh, look at the resources. Right, uh, so what I'll do is I'll just open a couple of windows. So uh, on the screen, uh, uh, what you are seeing is uh, towards the left, um, I have opened the dashboard uh, as, as a user called Rachel, uh, and the window is in red, and uh, Rachel is a requester, so R red Rachel requester. And uh, on the right side, uh, I have opened uh, the same dashboard page as Megan. Uh, so you, we are seeing some extra content uh, in the dashboard because uh, you know we we have added an adaptive card uh, which is shared with uh, with certain users only. Uh, so on the right side, I've opened the same dashboard page as Megan. Uh, who is uh, Rachel's manager, and the window color uh, is in mango yellow. So, <laughs> so M Megan mango yellow manager. Right. Uh, so with that context setup, uh, the the idea is Rachel will will raise a well-being request because she wants to uh, take a well-being day, uh, and then that request uh, will be actioned, as in approved or rejected by by Megan. Okay. So let's start with that. Uh, so Rachel opens the dashboard and uh, she sees the well-being card, uh, clicks on schedule, uh, and then it says she has five more well-being days. Uh, so th that's good for her. So she decides to take one well-being day. So let's say she decides to take that on 15th. Uh, and then she uh, 15th of April, and then she adds a comment saying, uh, I need a day off. Uh, and then schedules that. And then uh, now the number of well-being days for her are reduced from five to four. Now on the right side, uh, if I just go ahead and refresh uh, this uh, as Megan. Uh, so Megan is not interested in this card, which is, uh, uh, you know, she doesn't want to schedule a well-being request. She wants to view the well-being requests uh, that, that were uh, that were made by by members in her team. Uh, so she she opens up this card uh, wherein it says she has three uh, pending well-being requests. So she clicks on that and she sees that uh, uh, you know some members in her team have made uh, well-being requests. Uh, one of them is uh, this team member, uh, some random team member, and then uh, we've got uh, the the well-being request that. Uh, Rachel had just um, submitted. And now with that, uh, uh, now Megan wants to approve this request um, or rather view this request first and then then decide what to do with it. So she goes ahead and clicks on the uh, view button and that takes her to a Teams personal app. Now I won't open this in the uh, Teams app, but I'll just use the web uh, version instead. And uh, it opens that same request in the personal app with more details. So uh, let's let's have a quick look as to what uh, details these are. So firstly, on the on the right side over here, you can see who has raised the request uh, for when uh, was the request needed and what are the comments. Uh, and then uh, on the right side over here, sorry, not that one. Uh, I think, yeah, that one on the right side over here. Um, she can see uh, the calendar of, of the team. So basically uh, what is happening here is uh, she can see uh, the well-being day is requested on the 15th and there are uh, you know, uh, two other events uh, before the 15th and then uh, some other events after the 15th. So basically uh, she can see that Rachel has requested a well-being day on 15th and there are events happening before uh, the well-being day and after the well-being day, but nothing on the day uh, that Rachel has requested. So with that, 
uh, you know, with that in mind, Megan is happy uh, to approve this request. So what she does is uh, she comes uh, in the left corner over here, just adds a coming comment saying uh, all OK. Uh, and then while doing that, she can also uh, select a file to attach. So maybe there are some guidelines uh, with the well-being. Now, so she selects the uh, well-being document, guidelines document, and then approves uh, the request. So now the well-being request is approved. Uh, Rachel can go ahead and take that day off. So if I just go back uh, in the Teams app and just uh, refresh this, uh, we can see that the request has been approved. And if needed, now Megan can action uh, the, the other well-being requests that were submitted by her team members. So uh, th that's, the, that's the demo. Now let's have a look at the, at the code. OK. So Let's have a look at the basic elements involved uh, uh, as a recap before we jump into the code. Now I'll, I'll try to go through this a bit quickly because uh, considering the time. So firstly, we have got the home site, which is the Viva Connections uh, home site. In that, we've got a dashboard and we've got a SharePoint list, which is called as the well-being list, uh, which is the source for all the requests that 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 get created. And then the second element we've got is the is the teams uh, in in which we have the well-being personal app, and uh, uh, that's what we saw a few minutes back. So the dashboard uh, uh, it gets data from well-being list and uh, adds uh, data into the well-being list, and same is the case with uh, with teams. Uh, so it gets the data from well-being list in order to show the well-being request, and also uh, when a request is approved or rejected, it updates. Uh, that particular item in the well-being list. Uh, and then the final thing is uh, we saw some events uh, that appeared uh, in the Teams app for that, uh, you know, uh, the way it works is uh, over here, I've created a team called as marketing team. Uh, in the background that went and, and created a group. Now that group has a calendar. Uh, I've added some events in that calendar, and those were the events that we were seeing uh, in the Teams app. Right. Um, so uh, now uh, let's look at the first card, uh, first adaptive card, which is uh, the adaptive card that was adaptive card extension that was used by Rachel in order to create a request. So uh, Rachel opens the uh, dashboard uh, and then uh, she she sees that card and then that card what it does is on in it uh, on when when the card loads uh, it goes ahead and queries the well-being request. Uh, well-being list in order to get the requests that were created by Rachel. Um, and then it receives some data and says that uh, Rachel has, uh, you know, how many ever well-being days uh, remaining. And then once uh, with that, Rachel uh, clicks on schedule uh, that goes ahead and, and opens this quick view wherein Rachel can select a day when she wants to raise a well-being request and add some comments and clicks on schedule. When she clicks on schedule, uh, we write the data back to the SharePoint list. So uh, this is like uh, pretty much straightforward operations. Read from the SharePoint list on in it, and then write to the SharePoint list uh, on on scheduling the request. So uh, let's take a look at the code. Uh, so uh, all this code is available on GitHub. Uh, so this sample contains uh, two adaptive cards and one SharePoint framework web part, which is um, uh, the team's personal app. So firstly, we've got the reminder is, uh, and then uh, uh, we've got the rem uh, well-being reminder adaptive card extension .ts file. So in the on init method, uh, what we do is uh, we call this method called as get current users well-being request, uh, and all we do here is from the well-being list, um, uh, give me all those items uh, where the status is requested for the current user. So we use SharePoint REST API in order to get all those requests of the current user where the status is requested. Uh, once we have that data, we need to show, show that data. Uh, we, we do that using a card view. Now, if you want to see what those uh, different types of views are, there are a lot of videos uh, provided by the PNP community uh, on, on basics of adaptive card extensions. Right, one of the views is the card view. Now, uh, in the card view, what we do is, uh, now that we've got uh, the requests for the current user, we just show, uh, yeah, we just do some computation and tell them that how many of our requests they have. And uh, uh, in this case, you know, Rachel has four more well-being days. Right. 
then uh, on on click of schedule uh, what we do is uh, we open this uh, uh, this uh, you know the quick view uh, which is uh, which can be uh, you know created using a json and it'll have a typescript file uh, which runs the code uh, and then in the json uh, all we are doing is just showing all these different controls the date control the comment control and the the schedule button and then when we click on the schedule button what happens is uh, we open uh, you know in the .ts file uh, we have the on action method in that uh, what we do is we just create an item in the sharepoint list so basically uh, um, you know we we call the post method on the wellbeing list and then uh, uh, add the employee id the date uh, and the comments right so uh, that was uh, rachel using the uh, wellbeing uh, 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 you know request card in order to make a request uh, the next one is actioning a request now this is done by megan uh, i'll go through this uh, quickly so what we do here is uh, we uh, you know go ahead and get the number of uh, well-being requests that are pending uh, and then once megan clicks view uh, we show the pending request uh, and then once uh, once megan clicks the view button on the request uh, we go ahead and open the teams app and uh, show the request itself. Uh, again, uh, in the ACE, uh, uh, we've got the on init method. Uh, in that method, uh, the first thing we do is using SharePoint REST API, uh, we go ahead and uh, get all those items from the well-being list where the status is requested, and we, we are getting all the requests. We are not concerned about uh, the current user or anything. Uh, so once we have all the requests what we do is we just map all the requests into a, a, a custom object and one particular uh, thing over here, here is for each request we compose a teams url now this is nothing but uh, teams.microsoft.com slash entity uh, and then uh, we paste the id of the teams app uh, all this ID uh, will be part of the configuration, which is explained in detail in the, uh, you know, in the readme file of the repository. Uh, so we compose a Teams URL for that particular request. In the end, we just uh, put the ID of the particular request because that's uh, that will be needed in the Teams app. Right, uh, and then uh, in the card view, what we do is uh, we just uh, show to Megan how many of our requests uh, are pending. Uh, and then once Megan clicks view, uh, we go ahead and open the quick view, uh, which again is a JSON with all the different controls. Uh, so uh, we've got the photo of the of the requester uh, and the title of the request uh, and the view button. So when when the view button is clicked, uh, it is nothing but uh, uh, we ask uh, them to open the URL. Uh, so the it re redirect the Megan to a into the Teams app, and then in the Teams app, Megan sees the request. And with respect to the Teams app, uh, it's nothing but an SPFX work part. Uh, firstly, we get the particular request based on the ID that was passed, and then uh, we have a component in which uh, we go ahead and get the particular request and display the request using different components. In this case, we are using the MGT uh, person control and uh, you know the uh, fluent UI controls in order to display uh, you know the requester's details, uh, and then we have got a review form, a, a custom component that we have built, uh, which shows these approve and reject buttons and a comment box, and finally we've got the agenda uh, MGT control, which shows uh, all the uh, you know uh, previous events and the and the future events. Uh, we just use Graph API in order to get those events, and then uh, we we display them. So in summary, two adaptive cards and one SharePoint framework web part. All the details are present in the repository, and these are all the links. Thank you very much. Uh, Vesa, back to you. And really, really cool stuff. And, I, and, and the key is, of course, getting interested and then spending time on having a look on the code and understanding how it works. But really, really cool stuff and, and showing a lot of the cool technologies across Microsoft Teams and Graph and Viva and so on. So really, really awesome stuff. Now, 
we only have one minute time to go, so let's actually close up for today. Thank you, uh, Shai Baya, Reddy, Ian O'Brien, Waldeck, and Anup. Really, really cool stuff. Awesome demos today. Um, the recording of today's call will be available within 24 hours in the Microsoft 365 community, a YouTube channel. Um, you cannot access the recording directly from Teams chat, so a bit of a warning on that one. Every single week we are getting requests on that, but that does not work unless you're a Microsoft employee, so it doesn't work for external people. You can follow us on Microsoft 365 Dev or M365 BMP, which is the community and platform community uh, uh, account, and we will tweet whenever the recording is available through those accounts as well. The next Microsoft 365 platform community call happens on April 19th, so we 19th, so week from now. And all of the community calls are available from the AKMS M365 BNB. But that's it for now. Have an awesome rest of the week and stay safe. And please keep the feedback coming. And we are building all of these capabilities and platform options and code stuff for you. So let us know what works, what doesn't work, and how we can improve. Thanks, everybody. Let's stay in touch. Thank you.